Hello and welcome to Fluke Fridays. This is episode number 35 and you are at Fun with Fluke or Fluke Fun. And today what we're going to be going over is the 179. I had a comment from a viewer saying, hey, will you unbox 179 and kind of talk through it? And so that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to unbox this thing and then we're going to um, talk about some of the features and how, what that makes it a little bit different or why somebody chooses the 179 over other Fluke multimeters out there. So, when you look at this box, you see the 179, um, true RMS, backlit screen, and temperature. That's what Fluke wants to tell you about it. You see limited lifetime warranty, a few other things. Then here on the back, you see all these different features, and we'll try to go over that when we go around the horn with the, uh, with the turny dial thing. I don't know what it's called. user manuals and here is the 179 the first thing I'll say about the 179 this this has a has a strong following in the market and if you've used the 875 obviously that's the flagship for fluke and it has a lot of features specifically around VFDs and things for the industrial environment that are unique to it. But the 179, if you feel the two in your hand, the, the 179 versus the 87.5, maybe I'll put them side by side later in a picture or maybe um, for the screenshot at the beginning. But anyways, the, the 87.5, is much beefier in the hand. This just feels nicer. It's more ergonomic. It doesn't have the uh, rubber, like um, rubber case on it. The rubber boot that you can pull off. This is a, a rubber molding, uh, injected molded, and it's you, you can't take it off. So that that's a difference. They both have the kickstand and you know all the fun stuff from Fluke on the back. They accept a T pack or the magnet pack. Other accessories that come with this thing are just the test leads. Oh, and a K-type thermocouple that plugs in because it will do um, temperature reading. So let's start just going around the horn with this thing and talk about it. So first, voltage AC, again, true RMS. Um, when you, let's see if we can take a reading. Okay, so when you turn this on, you'll see that this has like a sliding scale. So if you like the old analog and you wanna look for the twitch, this is a much faster refresh rate than the numbers. So you can kind of see it twitch if, if you like that. Um, we can hit range if we wanna change this range. So now we're um, in auto ranging, but if we hit range, manual range, we can start changing this to where it just goes to 118, stays there, right? millivolt obviously out of limit um, for all these ranges and then you get back to where we were when we first started with the auto range you want to go back to auto range after you've been in manual just hold this range button down for a couple seconds it'll go back to auto and you're good to go okay now you see this frequency if we want to see that we hit the function key and boom 60 hertz or 59.99 so maybe our utility's off a little bit. I don't know. DC voltage, obviously, we're looking at AC right now where we're plugged in. So not gonna see much. Look at frequency, we still see the same frequency and it's freaking out a little bit as would be expected. Um, then millivolts. And obviously a K-type thermocouple that does output millivolts, so that's how you would do that. And if you needed that, you would unplug this and plug in your K-type thermocouple that comes with it, or you can plug in one of those K-type thermocouple adapters that will then um, take a normal thermocouple into the top of it. So let's do this. Red and red, black and black. And... Let's see if we can find the end of this thing. Oh, here it is. It's kind of sneaky. Right there. Okay. So you can see it changes the readings a little bit. But if we go to function key, 
We can see it in Celsius. Well, I don't think in Celsius, I think in Fahrenheit from the US. Okay, so you plug, plug in the thermocouple and hit the range. If you don't want it in Celsius, you can flip it over to Fahrenheit and put your finger on it if you want it to see it change. There you go, get your temperature. Uh, one thing we haven't done yet is the backlit screen. There you go. It's kind of hard to see with this one, but there it is. Uh, that's another difference between the 87.5 and this. This has a single um, level backlit screen, whereas the 87.5 has two levels. Okay. Um, resistance or ohms. I'm going to have to have this back together. There we go. We get our ohm reading. If we'd like to hear continuity, Go to the next one. Beep. Okay. Hear your continuity. There you go. And then we'll go back over here to the resistance. If you did capacitance or wanted a capacitance, again, the function key. And you have microfarads here. You hook the leads up to a capacitor and you'd see your microfarad reading. Diode check. This is like a, a diode is kind of like a, a one-way valve. So it lets, lets electricity flow one direction, but not the other. So you hook up the leads, you know, one way you should get a reading, continuity reading, the other way you don't, if the diode is good. Now you see milliamp is, uh, we, we went over to milliamp, and you see when it went from here to here, it flashes lead. Now, this is another difference between like when you get to an 87.5 or some of the other ones where they will continually beep if your leads are in the wrong jacks. This one, I need to now move over to one of our amps jacks. These are fused and this is not. So we put it over there. And then we could do milliamp AC or function key, brings it to DC. Um, or function again and we can get frequency okay and then next one same exact thing except higher range instead of milliamps you get full amps up to 10 amps if you're using this port um, another thing to do I can show this I'll plug it back into multimeter if you have used current and you get over here and you go back to voltage you always have to bring these back over here it's not a safety hazard because these are fused uh, so the meter will protect you but you will be replacing fuses if you try to measure voltage after um, having your test leads plugged into the amp ports so now I wanted to show you guys uh, the min max so you click min max, and obviously we have a steady reading right now. Pull this out, and then back in. Okay, now we're good. And now we can range through the min, the average, it's changing constantly, and the max, okay? So that's how you would scroll through that. So you got that. And then you have hold where you can use it in any function. Um, if you like what you see and you want to hold that, you can do that, bring it back, write it down somewhere. And then you have an auto hold, which is just going to, I believe it's going to um, watch for a, a voltage change or whatever, and then it's going to hold with whatever you ex whatever it thinks that you're trying to hold for. So anyways, that's, that's the uh, 179. There are smaller versions in this series. And hopefully this kind of explains a little bit about the difference between the 87.5, the 87 series, and the 179, 177, 175. You can look at each of those data sheets, but basically you just start stripping off features. Some of them don't have backlit screens and different things. And then if you get into the 77 series, you'll see it, those go into uh, the same exact form factor, but it's gonna be average responding meters, more for the military and those kind of applications. So. 
hopefully this really covered the 179 for you. I know it was a quick, basic overview, but hopefully it was beneficial for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification button if you want to be notified when I put new videos on. I try to do one every Friday. And if there's anything else, leave me a question. I'll try to get to it. Take care. Bye.